Hi, I'm Susan Colley and welcome to You're Not Alone, Surviving Your Child's Disability. Being able to read is an essential skill necessary to get through life. For people who have disabilities, reading can be tedious and sometimes completely impossible. The Perkins Braille and Talking Book Library is one way to resolve this issue. I would like to welcome our two guests from the library, Debbie Smith, who is the Library Outreach Coordinator, and Kim Charlson, Director from the library as well, who will speak to us in greater detail about how they can help. Besides blind and deaf people, who is eligible to utilize your services? The Perkins Library has um, several different disability that are eligible to use our services. Um, most of our materials are audio, and so not that many deaf people use our service for obvious reasons, okay. but, um, but we do have right. large print materials. So if someone was hard of hearing and had a visual impairment as well, they mm -hmm. could utilize our large print services. So obviously people who are blind or visually impaired have, um, have a need for different format of reading since they can't read conventional print. So um, the audio books are perfect for that and we also of course have braille books in our program too. So people who have other types of disabilities that qualify for our services. Like what it, types of disabilities? That includes people who have a physical disability where they cannot hold a book or turn the pages of a book because of that disability. So that could be paralysis or um, hand dexterity issues. Um, for elders, you know, sometimes stroke, paralysis, that kind of thing. Um, and then people who have a reading or learning disability. So this would certainly be a lot of children mm -hmm. who have processing disorders that they're not reading print as well as their peers. Um, they could do better with audio materials and, and listening, sometimes supplementing print reading as well. So um, for, for those students um, who have some kind of learning or reading disability, mm -hmm. we have an application that needs to be completed and it can be filled out by a, a reading teacher or the parent and then it needs to be signed and certified basically that the individual applying for the service does have a disability and for, um, for children with reading disabilities that would probably need to be signed off on by a pediatrician or someone like that, their medical doctor. Now adults also can use the services Absolutely. all the way up through the elderly. Absolutely, yes, definitely. That's great. And, and the most important thing to remember, and we will probably say this several times, is that the program is completely free. That's wonderful. <laughs> I, I don't know anywhere else that has that type of program where it's, everything is completely free, including the, sh the shipping, isn't mm -hmm. that correct? That's correct. correct. That's right. It's, it's basically the accessible public library for people who can't read standard print. So we, we serve people in every community in Massachusetts, um, regardless of their age. And again, you know, everything comes and goes through the mail and it's free um, to send it back to us. There's no charge Great. to return the materials. So it's a, a lending library. A lot of people kind of compare it to you know, Netflix or something, you know, you get it in the <laughs> mail, you read, you listen, you send it back, and we send something else. So that's kind yeah. of how it works. How long do you get a chance to um, keep the materials for? We, um, we have the, the over, well, our, our loan period is eight weeks. Okay. So that's a pretty generous loan period. We're, we're not, you know, jumping up and down to get materials back. So. We, um, we have an eight week loan period and you know, we also do not charge overdue fees. Wow. So it's, you know, it's- um, That's amazing. Especially for students, anybody who's going to school, mm -hmm. we certainly wanna make sure they have the books long enough to get done what they need to do. 
Correct. Um, with the with the materials. So yeah. that's that's how that you works. You mentioned that um, people in Massachusetts um, qualify for this. Do you qualify for anything if you live outside of Massachusetts? Well, yes, this is actually part of a national service. We, we come under the National Library Service for the Blind and Physically Handicapped. So there's some form of a talking book library in every state. So this is, oh, um, great. so if you move to Rhode Island, if you move to Connecticut, you just transfer your service to those states. Oh, okay. Yeah. What types of material does the Perkins Braille and Talking uh, Book Library have available? Well, I like to think that we mirror what a town public library has. So we really are more of a recreational reading source. We do have reference materials as well, but we're not a textbook library. That's a, that's a different organization um, that covers that. So. It's what do you mean by that? Well, what I mean is that if a student needed a textbook, for instance, a calculus textbook or something like that, mm -hmm. they would probably go to an organization separate from us. It's called Learning Ally, another very important resource. Um, it's headquartered in Princeton, New Jersey, but there's a studio here in, in Cambridge. Okay. Um, so that's a whole separate ball game. Uh -huh. um, ours is more of the novels and the biographies and the cookbooks and the, the s same kinds of books that you get from a, a public library, which right. we are. That's right. Do you, do you, can you get magazines and newspapers and that type of um, definitely, material? Definitely. Definitely. We have a lot of children's magazines. We have certainly have a lot of adult magazines, current news, um, and those come out in audio format and in braille format. And we have a very, um, well, I think it's a very exciting program <laughs> that, um, that's really um, state of the art for newspaper access. And it's called Newsline. And Newsline is um, telephone, primarily telephone based access, where you call up a certain phone number and you listen to daily newspapers, including the Boston Globe and the Herald and USA Today and Wall Street Journal, things like that, on the telephone. There's also um, an online computer component for anyone who has you know, assistive technology and can use the screen enlargement or speech output to listen mm -hmm. to, um, to the computer. You can use the computer. Um, and there's over 350 different newspapers from around the country available on this service. So it's today's paper. It's access to today's news right now. It's not, you know, today's paper three weeks from now um, when it gets recorded or put into large print. It's right then, right now. You can email yourself different articles you hear so you can save them and listen. Um, and for the for the techie folks, there's there's um, an iPhone app, which is oh, always great. you know cool. Everybody likes to have the iPhone app um, to listen to the news line right on your iPhone. So it's anywhere, anytime, 24 hours a day. You can have access to all these different newspapers, about 45 different magazines. There's even a job listing through um, Newsline where people can call up and put in you know, their zip code and then they'll see um, accessible job listings mm -hmm. and there's the TV listings. So for people who want to know what's on television, uh -huh. um, it gives them you know, the, at 3.30 this show will be on, at 4 o'clock this show will be on and you can check all the different channels mm -hmm. in your area. Again, it's based by zip code. So it's a really great service. Very now that's not for novels and biographies right. and stuff. It's just right. strictly for news. That's exactly. There's so, there are some magazines on the service and then the daily newspapers. So we have today's paper and yesterday's paper that stays on the service um, because it's a lot of content. So they, they rotate off as they get older off of the news lines. So. Mm -hmm. And I remember when it first came to this area, um, a young man who had been blind all of his life told me, he just expressed to me how exciting it was that he went out on a Sunday morning, sat in his hammock with a cell phone, 
and was able to read the Sunday paper all by himself That's great. without <laughs> depending on someone else. And that was the first time in his life that he'd been able to do that. And it meant so much to him that he had this access to the same information that I have access to. That's great. I bet a lot of other people would be excited about that too. Yeah, yeah. It's, very, so. it's a very popular service through our library. Oh yeah, getting the local news is great. And it's, it's free. Thing. And, it's, <laughs> it's, and right. it's free. It's, right. it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> now there's a special device that you have to use to get novels and biographies and things like that. And do you have to pur you don't have to purchase this equipment, right? It's all free. It's mm -hmm. it's loaned to with our patrons, and this is the machine. It's it's we call it the talking book machine or the digital talking book player. This came out five years ago now. About that. About yeah. it was preceded by a cassette player, and the wonderful thing about it is the directions for using it are built right into it. It's loaned to our patrons, so there's no expense. And I'm going to just start pressing some buttons so that, because there's no book in it, the buttons will tell you exactly what their function is. Play, stop. To start or stop playing a book, use the large play stop button. When the book is playing, press this same button to stop the player. When you press play again, the book will continue playing where you last stopped. So that's a really nice feature. If you've ever listened to books on um, CD, which mm -hmm. I do in my car, First of all, you have to change the CDs regularly because right. they're usually the books on like five or six CDs. Yeah. Secondly, if you stop the machine, you have to find where you left off. In I this see. case, the whole book is on this one cartridge. It's basically a thumb drive built into the plastic casing. And all the patron does is to insert it into the opening and it starts to play. Francona, the Red Sox years. Current position chapter <laughs> one. Can you guys How do one thing right? We, uh, we know Both what's on everybody's hours. minds right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> Half hours per game. So that just gives you a little tease, but this is a fun book. Um, there's a sleep button. Let me sleep. Pressing the sleep button once will play 15 minutes of the book and then stop the machine. Pressing the sleep wow. button twice that's, yeah. to play cool the book device. for 30 minutes. <laughs> well, it is nice because it's not uncommon to want to fall asleep when you're listening to books. Right. Mm -hmm. um, there's volume, there's speed, um, there's a built-in battery. When it's fully charged, there's over 29 hours of reading time. And then there's wow. a, a cord in the back to recharge it. So it's a very nice, compact, easy-to-use machine. And when we think about the fact that Many of our patrons are elderly and intimidated by equipment. It's really important to have a user-friendly um, device so that they aren't overwhelmed by it. Some people have you know, some memory issues in addition, so having the built-in um, manual really helps people. Do you want to say something more about the machine, Kim? Not so much about the machine. Um, as you can tell, it's very easy to use um, about the, the books and how they're mailed. So Debbie showed you what the cartridge looked like, the actual physical book itself. And all of our materials come and go through the mail, postage free. And then all you have to do when the borrower is returning the book is just reverse the mailing card, put it back out for the mail or drop it in a mailbox, and it comes back to us. And then we have um, a computerized system for all of our borrowers. We can set individuals up to get books every other week, once a month, um, quarterly, you know, only when they return something. We can customize any borrower's profile, you know, based on how often they want to get books, based on the subjects that they read, mm -hmm. um, so that they'll, you know, only get the subjects that they're interested in. Now um, this is on the application. And, the, and all of these all choices, of choices are, and things. that's right, they're all on the application. There's quite a list of subjects. There's author preferences and frequency of materials and so that people can indicate to us how they would like to get their materials sent. Do they get a choice? Like for instance, if you wanted to read like Jane Eyre or something, mm -hmm. you know, would you, can you like make that known to you? And Absolutely. You would send it uh -huh. instead of just sending out periodically. Right. right. Some know, people books. would tell us, 
only send the books I ask for specifically. Other people sometimes say, you know, it's difficult for me to read your catalog that comes out every other month, so why don't you just pick out six mysteries for me each month? And then, you know, the librarians will do that. Um, so people do call us. We have a toll-free number, and that um, allows people easy access to reach us. We also have a website at www.perkinslibrary.org. Mm -hmm. So that is also um, a lot of information is there. And we have an online catalog on our website. So you could go to our online catalog and you could plug in any title you were interested in to see if we have it and if we can send it out. A registered okay. borrower can actually send out books to themselves. They can assign a book and they'll go out the next day. Oh, great. So that's pretty convenient as well. Yeah, definitely. Now, how do you um, record this material and where do you mm -hmm. record this material? And can somebody volunteer to help in this endeavor? Mm -hmm. Well, two places. Um, some of the books, Debbie mentioned that we are affiliated with the Library of Congress National Library Service Program. So they do provide some of the books that we use in our program, the majority of them come from them, bestsellers, mysteries, romance, adventure, those kinds of things. Um, and then we have a recording studio at the Perkins Library and we produce about 100 to 125 books a year in our recording studio and we focus primarily on local interest titles, books that people here in Massachusetts, in New England would be interested in reading, you know, books about the Red Sox, the Celtics, the Bruins, all those kind of <laughs> things that are special to us. Right. Um, those books get recorded in our studio and are made available to our now, borrowers. Now, where's the studio located at the school? It's, at, the it's school? at our library in the Watertown. Library. Okay. And, uh, and we do have volunteers. All of our studio narrators are volunteers who have auditioned to be considered to, as a recording studio. We call them narrators of talking mm -hmm. books. And um, so we go, they go through an audition process. They're screened. When they're accepted, they um, make a commitment to work with us at least two years because we do a lot of training with them, teaching them how to Great. Um, run the computer and mm -hmm. how to record digitally and also you know just techniques in being a good narrator you certainly right, don't want yeah. somebody who's gonna you know sneeze or something like that on the recording <laughs> that's not what they're supposed or to have do have a flat line exactly you know, or be boring and flat exactly so you want them to have be a little dynamic and interesting and have that talent so that's why we audition and we screen to be sure they're going to sound you know, good on, on tape or good in audio format. So, mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you get to, to mm -hmm. audition? We have a volunteer coordinator at Perkins, and you could just call the Perkins School for the Blind in Watertown, ask for our volunteer services department, and they would take your name and let the individual know when we'll be doing another audition cycle. Then we would schedule you to come in and do an audition and get I screened see. for our program. That's great. Uh, can you visit the library? Yes, we, we have a walk-in area, which is open Monday through Friday from 8.30 until 5. And actually, we're going to be expanding our hours in the new year on to a couple of evenings a week as well. Oh, so great. So indeed, people can walk in, and we can sign them up for service if they're not already signed up, or they can select some books that we um, the librarian will go and get from the stacks. Um, most of the time, the phones are answered by full-fledged librarians. They have their masters really? in library science. We have That's amazing. eight on staff? Yes. Eight, yes. eight, uh, eight librarians. So wow. they are there to help people um, select books or answer questions. We have a reference librarian. We have a children's and youth services librarian. Um, we, they're they are there to be of assistance. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. It I is. Think that's, I think that's great, you know, because I, I don't know any libraries that have that much <laughs> service. <laughs> so I, um, I want to tell you about our newest program that we're really excited about. Well, there's two of them, actually, but mm -hmm. I'll start with the, tech, the techie one because, again, <laughs> you know, the, the technology is exciting. 
So we have another app. Um, it's all about apps these days. Apps, yeah. So we have another app for the iPhone and soon for Android devices um, that is called Bard Mobile. Bard is Braille and Audio Reading Download. So it's all these books that we have on this digital cartridge that play on the player that Debbie demonstrated to you can, with the app, be played on an iPhone or an iPad that simulates the, the player. It's got the same kind of rewind, play, fast forward button, but it's also got a download button. So you can download right into the device and play and you don't have to have the digital player that um, Debbie showed you. But wow, you are definitely mm -hmm. keeping up with technology then. <laughs> We're I trying. was wondering about that. So <laughs> you have to be registered with us to use the download service, but once you're set up, you know, it's just a matter of downloading anytime you want any of the books that are on the system. Wow. So our other program that we're real excited about is called Library Without Walls. And the Library Without Walls program is kind of like going to your library for an author talk or a presentation about a book or a topic. Well, some because we serve people statewide, it's not always easy for them to get to Watertown to do right. something with us. So we have, um, we use a teleconference service where people can call in to a phone number mm -hmm. and there will be um, a program at a designated time that might talk about um, healthy lifestyles or it might talk about, um, you know, a book that everybody read. We have, mm -hmm. of course, we have a Red Sox book club for all of our <laughs> sports fanatics that love books <laughs> about the Red Sox. and. We've had different authors of different books come onto the line, just like you would have at a public library. But um, it's done over the phone, so people that have transportation issues don't have to get themselves, you know, to Watertown or somewhere. They can just join so by phone. So you have the seminar live, but right then on the people phone. can just mm -hmm. right on the phone. Or? That's right. It's it's on the telephone. Um, the speakers are there, the attendees are all there I over see. the phone, and they get the same kind okay. of an experience. And then we record it as well for people who couldn't make it so they could hear it too. So that the first book that we did on uh, July 31st mm -hmm. was Francona. <laughs> and um, Kim had invited Dan Shaughnessy, who is a sports writer for The Globe and is um, the co-author of the book. He wrote it with Francona. Um, he joined our telephone conference call. He spoke to us for about 40 minutes, mm -hmm. talking about writing, talking about, oh, everything about mm -hmm. sports. It was really, he's such mm -hmm. a down-to-earth, nice man. It was really <laughs> fun to have him. It was. Everyone, and then, mm -hmm. then we opened up yeah. the phone lines and people could ask him questions. Oh, that's even yeah. better. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So it was nice. It was yeah. very fun. Um, now, you, you've already told us a little bit about how you apply for services. You know, you know, you have an application. Is there anything else that you need to do? No, not really. I mean, we, we, let's talk a little bit about the patrons again and who can become patrons. Okay. So there are people who are legally blind, mm -hmm. people who have a vision loss to a degree that it makes it difficult for them to read regular print, Mm -hmm. People with physical conditions making it difficult to hold a book and turn the pages. People with a learning disability. Um, so those are our individual patrons, but we also, institutions, organizations who work with these people can also become patrons. Oh, and that's interesting. So a nursing home, I just was at a conference of activities professionals, activities directors. They are so tuned into what we do and they use our services for their clients, their residents, um, and residential homes, and residential settings, and yes, schools, schools, schools yes. and the special ed programs, or any kind of specialized classrooms, yep. can be part of our program and use these materials with their students. Libraries in a school could be set up to have our materials in their library to work with any kind of student with specialized reading needs. That's. That's wonderful. I mean, I, I don't think schools really know about that um, because that's a service that um, I don't, I've never heard of being mm -hmm. discussed like in an IEP or an ISP right. meeting. I've never mm -hmm. heard of 
any of that being discussed. Right, and I think you're right that schools and teachers don't always realize that, that their students who have any kind of reading issues based on a disability could qualify. And it's such a pivotal time in a student's development about you know, learning to read. And when they have problems, you, what you want to do is hopefully not get to the point where a student is just so negative about reading because that's going to go with them all the rest of their lives. And reading could be such a, a wonderful experience and something that so many students you know, take take for granted. And yeah. so we're really hoping to promote the service that it can be used by students with a wide variety of disabilities Especially as well. Especially young kids who mm -hmm. are just learning how to, how to read and have those disabilities and that, those problems. Yeah. I think that um, it's really important that they have access to this material and, and to the, you know, actual machine. I think that's a great thing. And I think that when, when Kim was speaking a few minutes ago about the app of being able to download from the BARD website to an iDevice, mm -hmm. I, I think that that's particularly exciting for the younger people we mm -hmm. work with. True. Because they're, they're walking around the hallway has. in the school with the same device mm -hmm. that their peers are walking around with rather than having, wow, this is a wonderful player, it's nice for the kids to have the, the same device That's that their right. peers are having. Exactly. So we, we think that this is going to be really popular and, yeah, and make it even more inclusive so. and mm -hmm. more accessible to our students. Yeah. Is there a limit to how much you can borrow at one time? Well, not really. I mean, certainly if you had, you know, 60 or 70 books, we'd probably notice because we're librarians and we notice those kind of things. <laughs> but, but generally, um, you know, if there's a reason, especially for students, they have pretty high demand sometimes, they need to read a lot of different things. You know, we're, we're going to be pretty flexible about that. Um, but, you know, the books come back and when the, when the borrower is finished, they just mail them back. So, you know, we don't really have limits. Um, it's just based on what they can do and if they're downloading you know we certainly don't have limits the limitation would be how many books you could store on your device at one time mm -hmm. so um, but other True. than that now do the do the librarians check in with people who have like over an eight work week period is that part of their job we um, don't really have the staffing to do that exactly our no. staffing we try to focus on the immediate you know service delivery rather than chasing down the books. So we, we <laughs> kind of assume that people are going to send them back eventually. If we haven't heard from somebody for 10 or 12 months, and you know, we may, may give them a quick call, send them an email, just ask, is there anything we can do for you? But generally, we wait for people to contact us. Um, for those people I mentioned who you know, get a book returned you know, when, they, when they say they want another book sent, um, we do that and then we have um, people will pop up in our computer system saying you know they don't have any books they need to have some attention from right. the librarian and that's right. you know then the librarian will look at their their profile and say well it looks like they need a couple books and so they'll choose a couple things and they'll go out in the mail. That's wonderful. We, we have quite a high volume we send about 2,000 books out every day and get about 2,000 books in every day. Wow. So there's a lot going yeah. on <laughs> every is. day. I'll say. And That's over, a lot of over a couple of hundred phone calls usually a day. Mm -hmm. right. um, so it, it's wonderfully busy. Wow. Yeah, we actually serve 25,000 people all across Massachusetts. So it's, it is the equivalent of a small community, you know, in, yeah. in the state. People are calling from everywhere. And, um, and, and, and hopefully, after this show, you'll have more. Well, Absolutely. I, hope, I hope so. I hope so. Again, because, you know, it's, it's out there. It's available. It's free. We want to hear from people who qualify to use the service. If they've given up reading because they're aging and they just think, oh, I can't see well enough to read anymore, they don't have to give up reading because this whole service is there to make reading accessible again for them. Right. Well, 
The Perkins uh, Braille and Talking Book Library seems like a great resource for people who have disabilities. And I hope that people who um, are involved with the library, uh, you know, check this out. And, you know, it's, I think it's a great service. Let me give you the 800 number, just for anybody who wants to give us a call. It works anywhere in Massachusetts. It's 1-800-852-3133. Perfect. Well, thank you, Kim and Debbie, for being guests on our show today. Thank I you. learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you watching, Please join us again on You're Not Alone, Surviving Your Child's Disability.